Let's say you're trying to find some solid information about a serious health problem that concerns you, high blood pressure, diabetes. Yet everywhere you look, someone's trying to sell you something, like vitamins, yoga mats, blenders, drugs. Well, breathe a sigh of relief, because all we bring you are the facts. Welcome to the Nutrition Facts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Greger. Live from my treadmill, I bring you answers to a wide variety of questions, uh, like the benefits of milk thistle, uh, dietary recommendations for polycystic ovary syndrome, and how to use vinegar to combat blood sugar spikes. Okay, let's see what questions we have for everybody. Rocky McFly asked, There is new concern about meat-based nutrients, like arachidonic acid, taurine, carnitine, carnosine, in the German vegan community and some advice to supplement, should we be worried? Is there new data? Okay, well, guess what? You and I are both meat-based. The reason animals make arachidonic acid, taurine, carnitine, carnosine is because they're animals. Guess what? We're animals. We make it. We make all these molecules. We make carnitine. We make arachidonic acid. So there's no reason to supplement it um, unless you're not an animal but you really are. Next up, Oli asks, um, is having a high basal metabolic rate a bad thing? Does it really mean a shorter lifespan? Uh, yes, the candle that burns brighter um, uh, burns faster. Um, well, so um, we do have evidence that slowing metabolic rate does it appear to extend lifespan. Um, and so how do we do that? A slow metabolic rate, we can do that through caloric restriction. Or my favorite method, through nitrate-rich vegetables. So that's dark green leafy vegetables as well as beets. So you can go around starving all the time or just eat a big salad. Um, uh, so anyway, that, that would be the way to decrease your um, a metabolic rate for longevity. Um, also, would I recommend a good vegan B12 and omega supplement brand? Um, uh, so, uh, the most important thing with B12 is to get the right type of B12, cyanocobalamin, because it's the most shelf stable form. Um, and so buy whatever is the right dose uh, the, that's the cheapest cyanocobalamin you can find. Oh, and you also do want to get kind of a chewable or a sublingual or a spray or liquid, something like that, that dissolves in your mouth, mixes with your saliva. Um, and so, uh, whatever you can find out there, I would recommend. Uh, 2,000 micrograms once a week um, for those under 65 and over 65, 1,000 micrograms once a day. In terms of omega-3s, um, uh, I think these days the um, uh, the algae-based DHA is made by one company. It's just labeled with different brands. So it's the same stuff, just in different packaging. So again, might as well get cheapest. So I recommend considering 250 milligrams of a pollutant-free, meaning algae-based, DHA um, uh, in the cheapest form you can buy it. Okay, and you are absolutely welcome for all the work that I do. Next up is Elena says, is red algae a reliable source of calcium for vegans with osteoporosis need additional supplementation? Um, uh, calcium supplementation does not help those with osteoporosis. You just need to have sufficient calcium. In fact, calcium supplements aren't um, safe. They're neither safe nor effective, as I have videos on both of those uh, going through the data. Um, uh, but we do need to get calcium from somewhere. Well, it's the best source of calcium. Low oxalate, dark green leafy vegetables. Uh, there's lots of sources. You can get it from calcium. So tofu and sesame seeds, blah, blah, blah. But um, uh, um, all dark green leafy vegetables, with the exception of beet green, spinach, and Swiss chard, which are fantastic foods, just a little, uh, little stingy with their calcium. Um, all the other greens like kale and collards and bok choy, et cetera, the best sources um, of calcium because of all the other wonderful nutrients they have, like those vegetable nitrates I just talked about. Next up, oh, Elena is back again. Any signs back benefits of milk thistle? Milk thistle is a supplement traditionally used for liver issues. The problem is the way it's harvested. For some reason, they have to harvest it moist. Uh, something to do with the pods or whatever. And when you and whatever, however they harvest it, uh, ends up being contaminated with mold. In fact, serious molds. Um, uh, and so there's these fungal toxins like aflatoxin, 
um, such that I would stay away from milk thistle supplements, regardless of what they can do, because they're contaminated with fungal toxins. Bu or Bo, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce people's names. Bo McFarland says here are a lot of negative press the evils of seed oils. This include black human seed oil as a supplement. Why not just eat black cumin seeds or ground black cumin seeds? Just black cumin seed powder. That would be um, that would be preferable. But no, that's not what they're talking about with seed oils. They're talking about like cottonseed oil, safflower, sunflower, or these high omega six rich oils and the deodorization process. Um, uh, refining oils uh, creates compounds like three MCPD, which is bad for you. And so, yeah, we want to try to decrease our intake of, of refined oils, but um, don't have to have any oil at all. And certainly might as well get all the nutrition in your black cumin by eating it powdered. Okay, Brandon says, do women need collagen while pregnant? No women make collagen. Um, in fact, we all make collagen. No need to take any in our mouth. Deepak says, um, there was a video suggesting 1,000 micrograms of B12 daily over 65. That's what I just said. Very good. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can get away with 2,500 micrograms a week or even just 2,000 micrograms a week or 50 every day for if you're under 65. But, yeah, you really do need 1,000 daily um, over age 65. That's what you should do. Uh, and cyanocobalamin. Fantastic. Next up, Ronin says, given that tofu and most mushrooms must be cooked, um, should we treat the utensils that come in contact with them the same way we do raw meat? Okay, well, the reason most mushrooms need to be cooked has nothing to do with kind of like uh, a food safety issue, but rather a toxin issue. Um, uh, agaricus mushrooms, which are white mushrooms, crimini mushrooms, uh, or crimini mushrooms, and uh, portobello mushrooms, um, are agaricus mushrooms and produce a toxin called garotene, which is destroyed by cooking. So you want to cook those kind of mushrooms. Um, and then you cook shiitakes for a different reason, um, because they have uh, toxin that can cause uh, flagellate dermatitis. And then morel mushrooms you need to cook for a different reason. There's toxins in that too. And I also wouldn't want to eat them with alcohol, but other mushrooms are fine. So oyster mushrooms, for example, you can totally eat them raw. I've actually started growing oyster mushrooms. One of the reasons, one of the things that came out of how not to age my research is the importance of uh, uh, the importance of eating fungus, the importance of eating mushrooms and uh, 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 fermented fungal fermented foods like tempeh for ergothionine and spermine and all sorts of wonderful things. And so I actually started making oyster mushrooms. So cool. You can do it in your house, just like you can make like sprouts. Um, you can get fresh produce every, you know, during the winter, you can do the same thing with oyster mushrooms and you don't need to cook them. Although, yeah, I eat them cooked because I like them cooked. But anyway, um, and but now tofu, we do want to uh, not eat raw, eat cooked because of concerns about um, uh, food safety, um, uh, bacterial contamination. Um, but it's not at the kind of level where you know, you're going to drip a little uh, tofu juice like chicken juice onto your broccoli and run into run into problems. Um, and so the answer is no. Okay, Margaret. It's also overdue on our daily consumption of fermented foods. Um, uh, okay, well, the, the big problem with fermented foods typically is the sodium content. It's too much salt in something like sauerkraut. But there are ways of fermentation, like with tempeh, um, where you can ferment foods without the addition of salt. That'd be the best way to go. Um, yeah. If you are going to eat something like sauerkraut, make sure to rinse it under water to get rid of some of the excess sodium. Sheila says, I want to fast for autophagy, but I have hypothyroidism. How do I, can I get to the point of autophagy? Oh, wonderful. I got a whole chapter on autophagy and fasting is just one way to boost it. You can fast or go fast. 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity. Aerobic activity will increase autophagy. Um, as would decreasing your intake of acrylamide, which is found concentrated in French fries and potato chips because that inhibits autophagy. Um, and then we should try to go out of our way to eat spermidine-rich foods. The target is 20 milligrams of spermidine a day. How do we did that? Um, tempeh, mushrooms, peas, and wheat germs, most concentrated, cheapest source. 
Well, that's another thing I've changed in my diet. I started adding eating wheat germ. So now I mix my wheat germ with my ground flax seeds half and half. Um, sprinkle that on my foods because I want spermidine as an autophagy inducer and longevity compound. Also drinking coffee. Coffee induces autophagy thanks to uh, chlorogenic acid, which is the primary antioxidant in coffee. Drinking three cups a day of regular or decaf increases um, autophagy. Um, um, or at least uh, is associated with increased lifespan, which we assume is an autophagy effect because uh, chlorogenic acid does uh, increase autophagy in vitro, um, as well as um, um, we can activate autophagy through AMPK, which is kind of an anti-aging um, enzyme. And I go into boosting AMPK by eating, you know, you know, that's where the black cumin comes in, hibiscus tea and vinegar and barberries and on down the list as well as following recommendations to suppress mTOR because mTOR, um, which is a kind of a, which is a pro-aging enzyme, um, suppresses autophagy. And we decrease mTOR by um, uh, avoiding animal protein or reducing our intake protein in general and animal protein in particular. Okay, what's next? Okay, Rachel Walford it is 24, hopeful plant-based. Wonderful. Ah, oh, fantastic. Avoid high AGs. What are AGs? They're gerontotoxins. They're aging toxins. Advanced glycation end products, which are created, uh, most concentrated forms, in high, dry, heat-cooked meat. So boiled, excuse me, broiled, baked, fried, grilled meat produces these agent pro-aging toxins. So if you're going to eat meat, steam it, boil it, stew it, parboil it. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. But this is not a problem here with Rachel. Um, does have um, polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, and, uh, oh, but her blood sugar control is fine as well as her testosterone. Huh. Okay. So those are typical PICA symptoms. So what do I think of inositol spearmint? Okay, spearmint decreases testosterone, but it says your testosterone is fine, unless you've been taking spearmint, and that's where your testosterone is fine. That's possible. Um, um, I'm looking through these uh, these various compounds. So uh, one is, so I'm trying to think, do I have, I do have videos on PCOS, uh, PCOS, uh, check out my videos on nutritionfacts.org. I forgot what my recommendations were, but I do have dietary recommendations. Um, uh, maybe mint was one of them for a decrease in testosterone. That doesn't seem to be your issue. Um, and these other ones, I don't remember them popping up in the video. Um, although berberine, which you can get from barberries, is an AMPK booster, which is one of those anti-aging pathways. Carolyn says, I have balsamic vinegar seven times a day. Wonderful to reduce blood sugar spikes, which is one of the many benefits. It's also an AMPK inducer. Um, is it okay daily? Is there one type of, is this okay? And is there one type of vinegar that's better? Um, so uh, the magic is in the acetic acid, um, which is the definition of vinegar, which is water, with, uh, which is a dilute solution of acetic acid. So all vinegars have acetic acid. And so choose your favorite vinegar. I mean, something like apple cider vinegar has a few little apple phytonutrients along with the acetic acid, and balsamic has a few little grape phytonutrients, but uh, even plain white, nasty, distilled white vinegar would have um, those benefits that you're talking about. Um, and yes, yeah, sometimes day is fine. You just don't want to ever have vinegar straight because you can burn your esophagus. Um, but yeah, in fact, that's one of my 21 tweaks for weight loss is there's the Two teaspoons of vinegar with every meal. All right, fantastic. Good, good job. Okay, Rachel's back saying, any advice on getting rid of angular chelitis? I I have never um, looked into lifestyle interventions for that condition, so I'm sorry, I can't help you. Um, uh, do you think it's essential? This is Carolyn taking omega three supplement every day. It's better to have iodine. Oh, separate question. Okay. Um, so I think we should consider taking 250 milligrams of pollutant-free algae-based DHA every day. Yes. Is it better to have iodine from seaweed or supplements? Um, well, I mean, uh, you can take it for supplement. Um, uh, I mean, you can get iodine from 
I mean, the iodine is found in a variety of crops. It's just, it depends on what the iodine content of the soil is. It depends on what, um, uh, you know, is in your crops. Um, and you never really know where your crops are grown. So you don't know if it has enough iodine. So yeah, get a concentrated source of iodine like seaweed. So you can like uh, snack on nori sheets, you know, um, which is a convenient way and a tasty way to get your iodine. You can use kel um, not kelp, not um, kelp, Dulse powder, which is very kind of mild seaweed, or alaria, which is kind of noodle-like um, seaweed in soups and stuff. So, yeah, I'd encourage people to find a way to eat sea vegetables. Um, but, yeah, you could uh, supplement. It's particularly important for pregnant women to have a regular, reliable source of iodine. So, you know, 150 micrograms a few times a week is all you need. Okay. What are my thoughts on the health benefits of berberine? Well, um, uh, if you're getting from barberries, that sounds good. So barberries are sure some bar berberine. Barberries are these little tart berries you can find in Middle Eastern grocers because they use they make a Persian rice dish out of it. But I just sprinkle it on everything because they're delicious. In fact, uh, I'm actually out. I got to make myself a. I was just looking for them. Um, I got to order some more barberries. Um, uh, and so, uh, yeah, but I do think there's a caution for pregnant and breastfeeding women with barberries, um, because of the berberine. So that'd be my only caution on that point. I would not take it as a supplement. I would get it from a whole food source. Uh, okay. Jeff suggesting for landing a plant-based industry job in Southern California. Oh, how funny. Well, Hey, if anybody has a job, talk to Jeff. Um, I don't, is there's like some kind of plant-based board? Like, I know I like some of the healthcare, uh, in the healthcare arena, I know, but I don't know in the non-healthcare arena. So, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know, um, the best place for industry job board. If anybody knows a plant-based industry job board, let me know so we can tell Jeff about it. Okay. Sheila says, oh, I'm a mail carrier. My dad was a mail carrier. That's awesome. And, well, working the heat and sweat a lot. Is salt still not advised? You should be able to get all the sodium you need from food. Um, no need to take salt or salt supplements. How Jeff is back saying, how do, I, how do my opinions differ or agree with the following doctor's opinions or recommendations? Dr. McDougal, spelled wrong. Um, heavy potato and starch diet, Dr. Esselstyn. Wow, spelled right. That's the tough one to spell. Avoiding uh, nuts and oil, even olive oil. Um, uh, so I, uh, I agree 99% with both of those doctors. Um, uh, in fact, I just saw Dr. Mizrul speak at the International Plant-Based Nutrition Healthcare Conference. It was a rousing. Oh, in fact, I think it's free on the Plantrition website. Um, they gave him a luminary award, well-deserved. Um, and so he encourages to eat uh, starchy foods, fruits, vegetables, and starchy foods like beans and um, uh, whole grains. I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, my, uh, we probably differ on uh, white potatoes. I'd rather pe be, see people eat sweet potatoes and white potatoes just because they um, have, uh, you know, more nutrition. But uh, that's not much to argue over. Um, he also, I think, is skeptical of my vitamin D recommendation um, for people getting inadequate sun. Um, he's not a big fan of vitamin D supplements. Um, I, I talk about, and he's actually right in terms of all-cause mortality, but uh, still decreases cancer mortality. And so if you're not going to get heart disease because you're eating a healthy plant-based diet, then cancer is probably your number one nemesis. And so maybe vitamin D3 um, would extend life spans in those who aren't worrying about cardiovascular disease as much. Still an unanswered question, but uh, I would suggest that's possible. Sandy is in Canada. I'm going to be speaking in Canada. Uh, I forget when, but it's part of my tour. Um, oh, cannot find um, a chewable sublingual or liquid B12 in Sianica Balman. Um, can, you can't get online? I would just order it online. Oh, uh, yeah, you get it in tablet form. You could chew those. Uh, yeah, so uh, you want it to mix with saliva, ideally for maximum absorption. So I guess you could chew like a regular B12 tablet, although I can't uh, promise it'll be tasty. But I don't even like the flavored ones. I wish they just make 
I don't know, flavorless, but they have like raspberry or some cherry flavor, something gross like that. Anyway, next up, do I recommend yearly doctor visits as we age? You know, I actually talk about, uh, I actually have a video about annual doctor visits and how we don't have um, evidence to show that's beneficial. Um, uh, but uh, um, yeah, so it depends at, you know, what age or certain um, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting your cholesterol followed to make sure it's low enough. And, you know, at age 50, there's recommendations for, or, or at age 45, there's recommendations for colorectal cancer screening, age 50, recommendations for shingles vaccine, age 65, recommendations for a pneumonia vaccine. So there certainly are some landmarks um, where um, um, you would need medical care, but there's not great evidence suggesting that annual medical um, follow-ups are useful unless they're actually giving, unless you have a lifestyle medicine doctor who's actually inspiring you to eat healthier, to move more, to stop smoking. You know, um, if you had a doctor that talked to you about all that stuff and you left that office being like, Oh, I'm going to exercise more and I'm going to eat healthier. And you know, Oh my God. Now that's the kind of doctor visit that could save your life. The, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know how likely that is that your doctor's like that. Gianni says, I suffered a stroke. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Age 36. Now on warfarin or Coumadin for life. Haven't been diagnosed with antiphospholipid. Yeah. Clotting syndrome. Um, I'm already on whole food plant-based. Do I have any particular suggestions on what to eat? So you stay on warfarin for your life, period. Um, and because... Warfarin works, thins your blood by interfering with um, the action of vitamin K. You need to keep your vitamin K intake steady to kind of match your warfarin dose. Um, and so if all of a sudden one day you were just like binging on lots of dark green leafy vegetables with lots of vitamin K, then you could impair the ability of that drug to thin your blood. So I want you to eat lots of greens, but you just have to eat lots of greens on a regular basis. Um, and so they can match your warfarin level to uh, kind of effectively block that much vitamin K in your diet. Okay, next up, Alexander uh, wants to know if I recommend a protein intake. Yeah, oh, I do, rec I do recommend a protein intake. 0 0.8 grams per healthy kilogram body weight. Um, according to this, do I have to decide whether my goal is longevity or bodybuilding? That's totally up to you. Certainly for... Um, uh, elderly individuals, there's no benefit to additional protein supplements um, on top of adequate um, protein in terms of muscle mass, muscle strength, or muscle performance. We would love it if you could share with us your stories about reinventing your health through evidence-based nutrition. Go to nutritionfacts.org slash testimonials. We may be able to share it on social media to help inspire others. If you'd like to see any graphs, charts, graphics, images, or studies mentioned here, go to the Nutrition Facts Podcast landing page. There you'll find all the detailed information you need, plus links to all the sources we cite for each of these topics. My last two books were How to Survive a Pandemic and my How Not to Diet cookbook. Get ready this year for the launch of How Not to Age. And of course, all the proceeds for the sales of all my books goes directly to charity. NutritionFacts.org is a nonprofit science-based public service where you can sign up for free daily updates on the latest in nutrition research with bite-sized videos and articles uploaded nearly every day. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, no kickbacks. It's strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. I just put it up as a public service as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition.